So hello everyone, welcome to the second episode of covering cryptids of the world. In the last episode we focused on North America, but today we're going to be focusing on cryptids from the UK. So let's begin. The Big Grey Man of Mount Ben McDwee. The Big Grey Man of Ben McDwee is a creature of Scottish folklore. It is said to be a large and bulky humanoid figure whose presence is only rarely seen or sensed. It was first sighted by a geographer from New Zealand in 1891 who had been hiking, hiking the mountain. It is unclear the diet of this creature as the sightings of it are rare. It is said to be three metres tall and around the same, as, same height as Bigfoot. The first sighting was in 1891 when a geographer from New Zealand was hiking up Mount Ben McDwee when he saw a suppo the supposed grey man after hearing crunching footsteps behind him. However, the geographer ne never made his encounter public until 1925. Upon reporting this story, he received many responses from people who had claimed that they had felt the same feelings whilst walking through the mountain range. Scientists say that people who encounter the creature hear it but don't see it. Scientists also say that the people are just imagining it in their heads. Scientists have also said about the infrasound at Ben McDwee which creates an ominous environment. There is an optical illusion called, bro called the broken spectre. This is where the sun casts a shadow in fog and when doing so the shadow will look like a human shadow which is where people might get the big grey man from. Films featuring the Big Grey Man of Ben McDwee. The Grey Man of Ben McDwee, the, grey ma the Big Grey Man of Ben McDwee, Affleck Grey's account, and the Scottish Bigfoot. The Kelpie. The Kelpie is a creature of Scottish folklore. It is a shape-shifting shifting horse that, in most tale, shifts into a beautiful stallion and entices people to get on its back. However, the victim soon realises that they are stuck on the horse's back and the Kelpie drowns them in nearby waters. However, the vic- wait, sorry. Other tales suggest that the, vic that the victim and the Kelpie become good friends. Stories of the Kelpie date back to the Celtic times, which is a very, very long time ago. Based on stories, the Kelpie is said to drown people and eat them. Thus, we can conclude that the Kelpie is a carnivore and is said to be 2.3 metres tall. The Kelpie dates back to the 6th century in the 500s, where a supposed water horse was roaming Loch Ness. A story in this year began when a man named Saint Columba had fought this creature and killed it. In the 1800s, people had believed these stories and thought that this creature roamed Loch Ness. There have been numerous stories on how to defeat a Kelpie. One way is to remove its saddle, saddle, and when doing this, legend has it that it will be your friend until you die. Ab about this story, when the Kelpie becomes yours, make sure to not remove the bridal necklace around the Kelpie's neck. Without it, it will die in one day. Another way is to show the Holy Cross to it. It will then fall to the ground and, ground and die. Other ways to kill it are by shooting it with a silver bullet, just like a werewolf. It will dissolve into a jelly-like state then and die. Films featuring the Kelpie. Kelpie, the Loch Ness Kelpie, and Kelpie the Story. spring Hill Jack. spring Hill Jack is a creature of English folklore of the Victorian era. It is said to be a moustached man with humongous wings, white trousers, and a chest bearing his own rib, rib cage. It was first sighted in 1837. spring Hill Jack represents an abandoned and unloved play character who's seeking revenge. So, if he, if he is indeed just a character, we can conclude that he does not have a diet. He is said to be 1.2 metres tall, with a wingspan of up to 3 metres. The first sighting of spring Hill Jack was in 1837 by a woman named Mary Stevens. She was walking through Lavender Hill in London when suddenly a tall man appeared with massive wings, grabbed her with his claw hand. 
with his clawed hands. As she started to scream, the man fled the area. This sparked the name of the creature being Spring Healed. A year later in 1838 in Peckham, also in London, another sighting was reported with people claiming that he has a flame of fire on his right ear, but this was later cleared up in history as a feather, as fe feathers were very fashionable to wear in Victorian Britain. Uh, this is what they meant by the um, a fire. Just, yeah. Just saying. Anyway, then in 1904, in Liverpool, a sighting was reported, but this was found out to be a hoax. After these sightings, the creature would not be heard of for 73 years. And then sightings came from all over the world with a sighting from North Carolina in America in 1973, Sheffield in England in 1977, again in Sheffield in 1979, West Surrey in the UK in 1986, and another hoax in 1995. The last known sighting was the, ho the 19 1986 Surrey one, and this is the last one we've heard since. Films featuring Spring Hill Jack, Waxwork, Spring Hill Jack, and Spring Hill Jack. Owlman of Mornin. Owlman is a creature of Cornish folklore and is believed to be a humanoid figure with two red or yellow eyes with massive wings and talons. It was first sighted in Mornin, Cornwall, in 1976. Given that Owlman has the characteristics of an owl, we can say that he is a carnivore and an insectivore, meaning his diet focuses on meat and insects. It is said to be one and a half metres tall with a wingspan of three metres. Owlman was first sighted in the cosy Cornish town of Mornin in 1976, where two young girls were on holiday with their families in the little town. As they were driving, they saw a winged creature on the top of Mornin Church. It spread its wings and took off. The girl's father was so shocked by the event that they drove back home to their town of Lancaster and the family there, there then reported their story to cryptozoologist Tony Doc Shields. He's a very important character. He appears later in this presentation, so remember him. A few months later, two teenage girls were camping out when they reported to have seen the Owl Man whilst camping in a forest near Mornan. There are many more sightings of Owl Man, all of which described in the vicinity of Mornan Church. These reports took place in 1978, 79, 1989 and 1995. Sightings started to die down in the upcoming year of 2000. A theory was brought up that the, owl, the supposed Owl Man was maybe mistaken for the species for the bird species, the eagle owl. The eagle owl is an absolutely massive bird with huge talons. As such, owl's eyes reflect light and in doing so, emits an ominous red or yellow glow. This happens because owls have something in the back of their eye tissues called tapidum luckidum, which is Latin for bright tapestry. Films featuring owl man. The owl man which is estimated to be released about in the 1990s, Horses for Blood, The Lord of Tears, and The Monster of Glamis Church. The Beast of Exmoor. The Beast of Exmoor is a creature of British folklore and is said to be a large cat, speculated to be a, a panther roaming, e roaming Cornwall, Devonshire, South Moulton, and Exmoor. It was first sighted in 1983 by a farmer. Many claims have reported of dead livestock, so this would mean that the beast of Exmoor is a carnivore. It is said to be two metres long. The first sighting was in 1983 by Cornish farmer Eric Lay. He had claimed that a hundred of his livestock had been killed suddenly, with all of them having violent throat wounds. This was, to him, very strange. He did not know what could have done this. It couldn't be a fox, but what was it? A rumour was spread that a ghost-like cat was roaming round Exmoor, but, while well, there has been sightings of big, big cats speculated to be either a puma or a panther, but there has not been any reports of ghosts roaming the area, especially ghost cats. Soon later, in 1987, the supposed beast of Exmoor had been connected to over 300 cases of livestock going missing in farms. In 1989, three more sightings were sent to the press, and also to the West Somerset Press. 
with all the photographs that appeared to show a creature appealing it to be a black cat, which would make make it more of a panther than a puma. More evidence of the creature existing was shown with sightings between 1995 and 2001. These sightings had shown the creature attacking people who had filmed or photographed it. A disappointing event occurred in 2009 when a dead carcass of an animal had been found on a beach in Devon. Many people speculated it was the body of the famous and troublesome Beast of Exmoor. But after scientific research, it was found that it was just the body of a dead grey seal. Grey seals are also known as eared seals. Films featuring the Beast of Exmoor. The Exmoor Beast, Exmoor and the Beast of Exmoor. The Beast of Bodmin Moor. The Beast of Bodmin Moor is another black big cat, speculated to be a panther, that roams the area of Bodmin Moor in Cornwall. It was first sighted in 1995 by the locals of the town. The Beast of Exmoor and the Beast of Bodmin Moor are, are in a group in Brit British cryptid folklore known as the Big British Black Cats. As being speculated to be a panther, we can say it is carnivorous. It is said to be one to one and a half metres long, which is smaller than the Beast of Exmoor. The first sighting of the Beast of Bodmin Moor was in 1995 by the locals of the town. They claimed to have seen a large feline figure moving through their town roads. Soon after this was reported, the government carried out an investigation at Bodmin Moor to try and understand what the locals actually saw. Unfortunately, the investigators found nothing, but soon after it, a boy found the skull of what is believed to be a big cat in the forest. This led to many conspiracy theories, such as a person illegally importing big cats to the region, while others believe that it is a big cat that was extinct in Britain 100 years ago and it's coming back to life. Every year, there are 2,000 sightings or more of the beast, and the government are not sure whether they are hoaxes or actual. Films featuring the Beast of Bodmin Moor. The Beast of Bodmin Moor. Bo Nessie. Bo Nessie, or the Lake Windermere Monster, is a creature of British folklore and is said to be a sea serpent that inhabits Lake Windermere in the town of Bo Ness, near Leeds. It was first sighted by a local of the town in 2006. There have been cases and stories where fish have gone missing in the lake mysteriously. So this would mean that if Bonessi is indeed tied to these cases, it would mean that it was Piscifilus. While some say it's about 6 metres long, others say that it's 15 metres. Bonessi was first sighted by kayaker Steve Burnip in 2006. He claims he was paddling through the river when he sees two free snake-like snake humps, and about the size of the cars, gliding through the river. Steve was also paddling with his wife, and he pointed to the humps to show her. They both reported their sightings, but they were kept quiet. But not for long, as in 2007, a female kayaker, who too was a local of Bowness, had also claimed that she had seen three snake-like humps sail by her kayak. While all people that claim that this monster is true, there is no animal that inhabits that region of England that is that size that people describe it to be. Films featuring Bonessi, the Windermere Children. The Black Shark. The Black Shark is a creature of medieval British folklore and is said to be a massive black hound with ominous white eyes. It was first sighted in 1127 by locals of the town of Peterborough. The Black Shark is a dog believed to be created by the devil and it is also a belief that the Black Shark brings bad luck wherever it wanders, just like Mothman. Based on being said to be a dog, especially a demon dog, we can say that it is a, carni and it is a carnivore. It is said to be 72 centimetres tall and about one metre long. The first sighting was in Peterborough in 1127. It was when King Henry of Potoy, Potois, and his men had arrived in the town, where the locals of the town, and even some of Henry's army, had claimed to have seen demonic soldiers roaming through the forest, wearing all black, riding horses, and having hellish hounds with ominous white eyes with them. There were over 30 people who told this same account, and on the same day, a monk in Stamford had also seen the same thing. 
These events of people seeing creatures were known as the Wild Hunt of 1127. The Black Hounds were now known as Black Shucks. On this same year, there was an immediate change of weather, and northern cultures say that the Black Shuck is, the bla is to blame for the southern weather change. Over 450 years later, at St Mary's Church in Bungay in England, however, the account was lost in the depths of history. but was later found in 1901, where the account said that the black dog was roaming through a dark lane. And it is also said that if you see the dog, you will die at, by the end of the year. Another attack was recorded on the same year at another church in England, this time being Trinity Church in Blytheburg. In 1905, a man claimed to have seen a black dog turn into a donkey. During World War Two, a four-year-old four year girl had seen the black, a black dog creep into her bedroom before it disappeared. I'm sure she didn't sleep well. A confusing sighting was in 1974, where a ten-year-old boy claimed to have seen a black dog, black dog, sorry, charging towards him before it disappeared behind a car. He told his mother and the police what he saw. His mother insisted it was just the reflection of the car headlights. Films featuring the Black Shark, Black Shark, The Black Shark, and The Curse of the Black Shark. Fun fact, the Black Shark appeared in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Doba Chu The Doba Chu, also known as the King Otter, is a creature of Irish folklore. It is said to be a giant aquatic creature, half otter, half dog. It was first sighted in 1684 by the locals of Lake Serene's Lough on Achill Island. Many historians of the Doba Chu say that it attacks humans, so we can say that it's carnivorous. It's said to be 2.1 metres long. The first sighting of the Doba Chu was in 1684, with the sighting in a letter labelled Description of West Connaught. The person who had claimed to see the creature described it as a large black body in the water. There was a confusing incident in 1722 with a woman named Grace Colony. She lived next to Lake Serene's Lough and there went there one morning to wash her clothes. Then a monster violently attacked her and she failed to return home. Upon failing to, Grace's husband went down to the lake to find the Dobachu, feasting on his wife's body, dead body. Her husband drew a dagger and somehow managed to kill the beast, but it called in a strange whistle before it died and summoned its mace, mate. The second Dobachu pursued Grace's husband for several miles until the husband killed the second. Over 174 years later, in 1896, a woman named Miss Walkington was taking a stroll next to the lake when she spotted an unusual creature by the banks of the water. She described it as being half otter, half dog. She wrote a letter to a man named Doc, Mr. Wynne Chichester Hart, who was one of the men in charge of the lake, and he responded to her saying, there has been more than one report of this, this creature that she described. In 2003, artist Sean Corcoran said that he had sighted the Dobachu on, on the island in Galway County. Films featuring the Dobachu Glimmerman, the Doba Chu episode. The Stronzy Beast. The Stronzy Beast is a creature of Orkney culture. It was it was an unidentified organic mass that washed up onto the Orkney Islands in Scotland in 1808 after a severe storm. It was pointed out that it was washed up onto land by a fisherman. The Stromzy beast is what is known as a globster. A globster is an unidentified organic mass that washes up onto, onto shore from a stretch of water. A certain stretch of water. As it is counted as unidentified, we do not know its diet. As people swarmed the beaches of Orkney to see the beast in 1808, officials say that it was at least 16.8 metres long. That's 35 feet the Globster known as the Stronzy Beast washed up onto the Orkney Islands in the town of Stromzy, or Stronza, as it was known back then in the 1800s. The resemblance of the creature was similar to Loch Ness's, so people were panicking a lot, and I mean a lot. Later, 109 years later to be precise, 
five fishermen were sailing in the place called Hoy when they claimed to have seen a large serpent behind, befo- beside their boat. In 1949, scientists came to the conclusion that the Stronzi beast was just the dead and decayed basking shark, as they are species of as they are a species of shark native to UK waters, with Scottish professor John Goodsir coming to the same conclusion. But not many people agreed with this theory. Films featuring the Stronzi Beast. In search of the Stronzi Beast. The Hairy Hands of Dartmoor. The Hairy Hands of Dartmoor is a creature of English folklore and is said to be a pair of giant hairy hands that pulls cyclists and motorcyclists off the road known as the B3212. As for over a hundred years, the hic- vehicular disasters occur on this stretch of road with unknown causes. This isn't a st- your standard road accident, as many people claim that they were forced off the road. The first known case of this story was in the 1920s, when Dr. Ernest Helby claimed he was pulled off the road by another force. The cases have described it, to ju- it just to be a pair of hairy hands. But if the hairy hands are belonging to an actual sentinel being, and if it's going after people, we can actually say that it's carnivorous. Since all of the cases of the hands explain that they only see it for a split second, we don't know its size. The first sighting was in 1921, when Dr. Ernest Helby and his daughters were driving down the B3212, when he suddenly lost control of his motorcycle, and as he struggled to regain control, he told his daughters to jump off. And as they did, Dr. Ernest crashed into a tree and died instantly. Later, in August on the same year, an army officer was walking near where Ernest had died when he had claimed that something had tried to drag him off the road. He claims it was that a pair of muscular and hairy hands. He survived and reported his sighting to a friend. In 1924, a woman reported that she was camping with her husband in a caravan when a pair of hairy hands, as she reports, tries to wrench open the doors to her caravan. The husband and the woman fled the area. An account of of a man named Rufus Endell is in a book called Supernatural Dartmoor by Michael Williams. Over 28 years later, in 1962, a man named Florence Warwick was driving down the B3212 when the hairy hands pressed against his windscreen. He is said to have survived. Films featuring the hairy hands of Dartmoor. The hairy hands. The Lake Muckross Monster. The Lake Muckross Monster is a creature of Kerry folklore and is said to be a giant serpent of a hanging gulag. A gulag is a is the part of a eel, as you can see here. It's the flabby bit that hangs down an eel and an iguana's um, neck. It was first sighted in Lake Muckross in Killarney, in Killarney by scientists in 2004. Stories have reported that cre- that the monster has made fish go oddly missing, so we can say that it's piscivorous. It is said to be 20 metres long. The Lake Muckross monster was not necessarily sighted first, but more came about in 2004 when Irish scientists who were studying the fish native to, who were studying fish native to Lake Muckross, had realised that all the fish's population levels that they had been studying had depleted very suddenly, this including the Arctic char, the ferox trout, the common trout, Atlantic trout, and even some species of electric and normal eels. The scientists could not figure out the cause to what had decreased the fish's population at such a rapid rate. Then, three years later, in 2007, another sighted was recording on video showing a bump poke at the water slightly. Films featuring the Lake Muckross Monster, a deep lurking thing. The Loch Ness Monster. The Loch Ness Monster, along with Bigfoot, is probably the most famous mythical creature of all time, and is said and is a creature of Loch Ness folklore. It is a large serpent, sea serpent, sorry, with an elongated neck. The first sighting of the Loch Ness Monster is unclear. 
but it is said to take place in the 6th century. And it is a creature and takes place in which the creature inhabits, Loch Ness River, which is the largest river in the UK. It has the equivalent amount of water in it than every other river in the UK. It is said to, that it eats fish and other reptiles that inhabits Loch Ness. It is said to be 8 metres long, 3 metres tall and 1.2 metres wide. The first sighting of the monster remains unclear, however stories say that the first sighting dates back to the 6th century, where a person named Abbot Yunan was on a mission to convert the native Picts, Picts are what people of Scotland were known as at the time, from their paganism to Christianity. While on his way to Scotland, he discovered five men who were burying a person, and one of the men told Yunan that the person whom they were burying had been attacked and killed by a beast in the waters of rivers of not Loch Ness, a stretch of water of river Riverness, sorry, a stretch of water co connected to Loch Ness. After hearing about this beast, Abbot Yunan sent one of his followers to the river to confront the beast. When the monster approached the swimming follower, it is said that Yunan made eye contact with the creature. It is said he pulled out the Holy Cross and the creature sank to the bottom of the river. The sighting that could actually confirm that there might be a creature in the water was probably be around in the 1800s, where people were reporting that something was in the rivers of Loch Ness. Some people had said that there was a sea serpent in the water, and these sightings became more popular in the late 1800s. But one of the most famous sightings was in the April of 1933, where John and Aldi McKay were driving down the A82. It is said that when Aldi looked out the window, he saw a creature with three humps turning in the water for a full minute until it disappeared. In the July of that same year, a man named George Spicer and his wife were driving down the road where he claims a large, limbless creature with a massive neck was slivering across the road in front of them towards the Lake of Loch Ness. A fake photograph sighting was in 1933 by a man named Hugh Gray with the picture showing a shady character in the water. That This was cleared up as fake, revealing either an otter or a dog. The most famous fake photograph of the Loch Ness Monster was also in 1933, where Robert Kenneth Wilson took the most famous photograph of the Loch Ness Monster. And this photo was believed to be true for over 60 years, until 1994, where scientific research has shown that it was fake. In the 1950s, more sightings were now more and more photographed. In 1977, another sighting was made by Tony Shields. Tony Doc Shields, the man who was involved in studying famous cryptids such as Mothman, Owlman and so on. Remember him from the Owlman? And so on. On average, there are 10 sightings of the Loch Ness Monster every year. Robert Kenneth Wilson's photograph. Robert's name does not sound familiar, does it? But I'm sure all of you know the picture. Though being a fake picture cleared up to, the picture is still used in books or social media websites about the monster. I'm sure everyone recognises that picture. Tony Doc Shields. Tony Doc Shields is a, crypto a cryptologist and a cryptozoologist who studies famous cryptids. Films featuring the Loch Ness Monster, Secret of the Loch, What a Whopper, The Seven Faces of Dr. Leo, The Secret Life of Sherlock Holmes, The Loch Ness Horror, Nessie, Amazon Women in the Moon, Freddy, Fro 7, Loch Ness, Beneath Loch Ness, Scooby-Doo and the Loch Ness Monster, Lassie, Beyond Loch Ness, The Ballad of Nessie, and the list goes on. Finally, we have The Banshee. The Banshee is one of many species of ghost and is a member of Scottish, Welsh of, and Irish folklore. It is said to be the messenger of hell. When someone is about to die, they release a horrible screech to signal the dead that someone is going to die. A Banshee, as I said before, is a species of ghost. Given to this, it does not eat food, water or sleep.
it does not need food, water or sleep, sorry, is said to be about 1.21 metres tall. The first story of the Banshee was in the 9th century, as there was a ruler of the O'Brien tribe, and they claimed that a female spirit was haunting King Cora Castle near Killaloe in Clare County. <coughs> At the Battle of Clontarf in 1014 AD, fought between the Irish and the Danes, Irish King Brian Boru died in the battle, that it is said that, the ba that a banshee witnessed his death and upon doing so, told him of his future, and he survived the bad tale. In the 19th century, or the 1800s, two servants had been ordered that was carrying the family's eldest son, whom was trying to find a cure for the disease he had. The coach had arrived, but as the servants went to open the door, it is claimed that they saw a skull peering through the window. One of the servants, had screamed and fainted. It is said that ten minutes later, the servant had woke up and saw no sign of the coach. Shortly later, the real coach had arrived carrying the eldest son. Unfortunately, his disease became so severe that he died. With more stories, people are concluding that the Banshee only visits people who have suffered severe deaths like murder. Films featuring the Banshee, Cry of the Banshee, which was made in 1970. However, it wasn't released until 1997. Banshee, Scream of the Banshee, Banshee, and a TV series called The Banshee, which lasted from 2013 to 2016. Well, that's going to wrap up this episode of Cryptids. Um, the next will focus on creatures from Asia. If you did enjoy, uh, stay tuned.